Let us discuss the photoelectric effect today. What is the photoelectric effect? Well, the photoelectric effect says that when light of a sufficient frequency is incident on a polished metal surface, electrons are ejected from it. This was first explained by Albert Einstein in 1905 using the quantum theory, but before that in 1867, this effect was discovered by Henrik Hertz. Well, in 1905, when Albert Einstein tried to explain this using quantum theory, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for this. This is because this experiment, when described to, through quantum theory, proves that light exists as packets or as quanta, as quantized packets. That is, it reconfirms that light in itself has a dual property, one of a particle and one of wave. Now, what really is this effect? Well, in order to describe that, we would have to use this particular diagram. In this diagram, you see, we use two metal surfaces that are very polished. Uh, this uh, is our metal surface, and in between these two metal surfaces, we connect a um, electric circuit, like this. Now, in between these two polished metal surfaces, what we do is we let light of a certain frequency be incident on this metal surface. The, this is basically photons um, hitting the surface and in between these two surfaces over here as you can see we say that in between these two metal surfaces we let vacuum take over now when light is incident on this polished metal surfaces or surface electrons are ejected from this polished metal surface so e flies off from this metal surface to this metal surface over here and what we also do is since like there's a battery uh, that this be v this is the positive and this is the negative and what we do is we connect an ammeter over here let's connect the ammeter oops okay we have our ammeter over here. What our ammeter will do is it will measure the electric current, the amount of electric current flowing in between these two points over here. All right. Now, one question might be is that why are we actually using vacuum? Well, this is because we do not want any of the electrons that are being um, kicked off from this metal, pol uh, this polished metal surface to interact or bump with any gases in between these two metal surfaces. And that is why it's very important to use vacuum. All right, so what we do is we keep on increasing the V over here up to a certain stage where the ammeter reads zero amperes. That is no electrons flow in between to these two metal surfaces. And this will be achieved because electrons are flowing in this direction, in this direction, this is the direction of electrons, but if we allow V to be as sufficiently high, this voltage across these two ends will try to resist, will try to resist these electrons from actually coming over here. So what we do is we increase V. Now, at that particular value of V, where this zero amps is recorded, we say that that V is V sub S, where this represents the stopping potential, the stopping potential. The question is, what is actually the stopping potential? Well, the stopping potential can be expressed as V S to be E K max over the electrons charge. And what is actually this 
EK max, EK max over here. Well, EK max is the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons liberated from the surface, the surface being this. So this is the maximum kinetic energy. And from this, of course, we can write that EK max is equal to Vs times E. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Ek max over here is represented in terms of electron volts, which is also another unit of charge. Now, in order to describe this, we can also use a particular graph that plots Ek versus the frequency of light. Now, it is noticed that <clears throat> from point zero to a particular frequency like as you increase the frequency of light if this be the frequency of light if you keep on increasing the frequency of light starting from zero until one particular point over here let's say this is the arbitrary point the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons they won't increase they absolutely will not increase but after that it will steadily keep on increasing at a linear rate. So over here, you could say that the electrons start to eject. Now, this particular point over here, that particular frequency we denote by F0 is the threshold frequency. The threshold frequency. Well, what is the threshold frequency? Well, this threshold frequency is that particular minimum value of f or the frequency of light until which no electrons are liberated so until the threshold frequency threshold frequency no electrons are ejected so as you can see this graph of ours is kind of looks like y equals mx minus b, right? So this can be expressed by the equation that ek is equal to h phi, h frequency, f minus phi or phi. Let me write this down like this. Now, <clears throat> mathematically, it turns out that the slope of this graph, the slope, or the gradient, you'd say, turns out to be h, which is Planck's constant. And the value of Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second, of course. So the slope of this graph mathematically turns out to be h phi, uh, I mean h, and frequency is just the x plot, and phi over here. So what is actually phi? Well, it turns out that if you plot back the graph that is expressed over here, if you plot it back like over to over here, this turns out to be the value of phi. So this is this phi over here turns out to be the minimum energy required to eject electrons. In other terms, we also call this phi as the work function of that particular surface of the surface. All right. And this energy EK over here is the leftover energy, leftover energy, and H phi, HF, is the given energy. energy. And this is our equation. All right, so what is actually this, the uh, final um, significance of this entire experiment or the photoelectric effect? Well, experimentally, it is seen that increasing the intensity of the light, meaning increasing the photons, does not actually increase the kinetic energy of electrons that are ejected. It can only mean that for one photon or for every photon, no more or no less than one electron is ejected. 
which means that like if you have like five uh, photons, it would only mean that five electrons are ejected. This actually proves that light exists as quantized packets or quanta, which Albert Einstein actually explained through his quantum theory. Well, that's all.